Pioneer Plant in Gibbsfield Farms today. Thought I'd give everybody a quick show of my planter and what we're doing in field conditions. So the planter first is set up with uh, clean sweeps. And I built these plastic pieces to put over because I didn't want rye tangling with my spiked wheels there that are on the back. You can kind of see them. I'll turn it around this way here. Didn't want to tangle it, so I put these plastic pieces on. They're working pretty decent. Um, we've got spike closing wheels on the planter. Getting into some heavy clay here. We got liquid fertilizer going in furrow. So we got this hose here is actually going to go in furrow. We can also take this hose off and put it here in the back, or we can dribble fertilizer beside the row out the back with these stainless tubes. Got three bushel boxes on there. Got electric V drives. Got it right up in here. These are electric drives that meter the seed that goes in. It's a vacuum planter, so you can kind of hear the vacuum humming in the background. And the vacuum actually sucks the seed to a plate inside these, and then they drop out into the tube and down the row they go. That's running our liquid. We're running 20 gallons in furrow of uh, biological. It's really a pretty simple planter, not too fancy. We do have hydraulic downforce on this. Hydraulic downforce right here. It's a hydraulic cylinder that pushes down on the row to keep that planter unit on the ground in contact with it. So we come back over here and kind of show you what the seed trench looks like that we are making. We were planting into cereal rye, hairy vetch, and clover that was seeded last fall. So here's what it looks like. Right here. The soil's nice and crumbly, no tilling it right in there. It's nice and soft. You can actually move it right with your hand out of the way and dig up that seed. That is, and we got earthworms in there. Right in there. I ain't gonna worry about digging up the seed. I dug it up for them already today. Here's where our row looks like. You can see where we moved the manure out of the way and any big clumps that we had. We kind of part in that cereal rye so we can plant in it. That's what the finished product looks like. We'll come back in here and kill off this rye. That'll be our weed control program. So we use hardly any herbicide on this. We're cutting back more and more every single year. This year we're hardly gonna use anything. So. We're trying to go farther and farther away from it to the point to where we can possibly eliminate it or hardly use anything at all. So yeah, this is a really nice field. Pulling this with a John Deere 8110 tractor. Got the saddle tanks with our biological in it. We got a tank there that also runs in furrow on the planter. We're not running anything with that right now. We're just running the saddle tanks because we're running such a high rate that a little tank can't keep up because they have a big enough pump. So we're gonna come up in the cab. I'll show you what we got going on in here. We've got our monitor that controls the uh, population and the drown force and everything, the simulation, it gives me all that as I'm planting. We've got our automatic uh, steering, our auto steer here. Uh, it's an outback guidance system, works great. This is precision planting. We really like that equipment, works great. Ties right in with our field view map here, which the map that is actually showing is our hydraulic down pressure on the field. Come over here, this is our liquid in furrow for the pump that's on the planter. We're not using that today. And then these control our row cleaners. We can adjust them up or down. Right now we just barely have them floating. So there's actually no pressure on them and there's no uh, air pressure picking them up. So everything's working really good. I turn around, drop the planter in, uh, hit that little bitty button right there. That's my auto steer. We got the monitor here we're planting with. It's kind of nice, you can see this population we got set at 32,000, our singulation, how good the spacing is, our downforce that we're running on this. It's actually pretty good considering it's no-till, it's heavy ground. The auto steer is painting the map and then we have our map of our hydraulic downforce. It's kind of painting that different colors depending on how much pressure it has to put down. 
Works pretty slick, got a beautiful view, no dust. Smells nice out, got that fresh, lush grass growing, that cereal rye, it's really nice. Works really good. I can keep track of what I got going on behind me while the auto steer is going. We are in some hillier ground. We're planting our test plot this year, not our test plot, our Corn Growers Association corn this year for the Yield Growers Contest. So I've got that sweet American flag going. We've got the, you can see there behind, that's uh, right in front of the American flag. Uh, my finger goes right there. It's called a red ball system. So when the liquid is floating through, the little red balls go up and they actually float. If one of them drops and is not floating, I know that that row is plugged. So it's a great system to be able to check to make sure that I got liquid going to every single row. Because uh, if we don't have liquid going to a row, you'll have streaks in your field. Well, green, 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 then a yellow streak where it didn't work. So it's nice, I can keep an eye on that. I can monitor them little red balls floating in that thing and it works really slick. Nice, simple system. Just a 12 row John Deere 1760 planter. Nothing super fancy, but I did throw a bunch of goodies on it just to help with our no-till operation. Uh, since I don't own any tillage equipment, I dumped that money and invested it into the planter. Figure I got one good pass, let's get her done right. So, I thought I'd give everybody a quick update on what we got going on here and what we're doing. And we got a fair amount of acres to go yet. That's that little creek bottom. I'm gonna get the rest of these corn acres in today on this field and probably switch back to some beans then to, for some custom work. So that's what we got going here at Gibbsfield Farms.